السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the beneficent the most merciful First be to Allah alone we praise him and we seek his help Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray no one can show him guidance I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah alone and I bear witness that Muhammad peace be upon him is his last messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Dear viewers everywhere in the entire globe, not only in the Muslim world. I welcome you to a new series in which Allah the Almighty will open our hearts and minds in order to understand the truth in an attempt to accept it and act upon it by Allah's leave. This series is titled Our Belief. We're going to discuss what do Muslims believe? Why do they love God so much? And why do they revere their Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as well as the rest of the Prophets and Messengers so much and they make no distinction between any of them? Why are they so attached to their book? Why do they seem to react whenever anything that hurts their faith or belief anywhere in the entire world, they would react to it? In order to bridge the gap between Muslims and non-Muslims, this program is produced in order to bring Muslims back into the main belief, to the mainstream, and to remain steadfast for those who are already on the mainstream, this program was put together by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was reading in the Quran and I found a verse in the third chapter which is known as Ali Imran. This verse is uh, worth of pondering, it needs a long pause. Allah the Almighty commanded the believers in this verse as follows. He says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, ittaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Very interesting. Let's know what it means in English. Allah the Almighty says, O you who believe, so he's addressing the believers, those who already accepted faith, they believe in Allah in the last day and all his prophets. He's addressing them by saying, اتقوا الله حق تقاته Fear Allah as it should be As he should be feared Keep your duty to him in the best way In the best fashion And die not but as Muslims It is very amazing Allah is calling upon the believers To make sure that They will die in a state of Islam What does it mean? It means brothers and sisters Guidance is not for granted not because you and I happen to be born in Islam, that means we'll be capable to maintain the state of guidance until we reach safely to heaven or receive salvation on the day of judgment. No, people do change. Some people abandon their religions. Some people get persuaded by uh, Satan, by the holy temptation, by ignorance, by arrogance, by so many other means, and they end up departing their religion. So they were born in a state of pure nature. They were born to Muslim parents. They have been taught the Quran, but for a reason or another, they deviate. They go astray. So the Quran emphasizes the very important fact, which is that you have to remain steadfast and keep on the straight path until you meet Allah the Almighty safely or else. اتقوا الله حق تقاته وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And in order for any person to remain steadfast until he reaches safely to heaven, he and she are required to observe righteousness and piety. And uh, observing this righteousness would not happen haphazardly. First, one is required to know what does Allah want from us? What does our Creator want from us? And what are our duties to him? In one very interesting hadith, we find the great Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks one of his companions, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him. And he says, O oh Mu'adh, do you know what's Allah's right upon his servants? Do you know? Brothers and sisters, do you guys know what does Allah want from us? Very important question. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal said, O oh, Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Allah and His Messenger, peace be upon Him, know best. 
That was an excellent answer since the question was the Prophet وسلم, and perhaps that he have something to add, elaborate and explain. So Mu'ad ibn Jabal said, Allah and his messenger know best. So the Prophet peace be upon him said, Allah, Allah's right upon his servants is that they should worship him alone and not to associate any with him in worship. This is what Allah wants from us. He wants us to worship him alone and not to commit any form of shirk or deviation or setting partners to him in worship. By the way, setting partners to God in worship is not by simply praying to idols or worshiping uh, other than God. There are so many forms where sometimes people who are uh, supposedly Muslims, belonging to the Muslim Ummah, they may practice these forms of shirk. So this program was also designed in order to explain to people the correct belief, what do we believe in, and how should we worship Allah the Almighty according to His will, not according to our desires. Since Allah is a creator, since Allah is the only one who is worthy of worship, then He is the only one who is a legislator. And worship is not simply the prayers and fasting, worship is uh, in our entire life. There is a beautiful verse by the end of Surah Al-An'am, the Katab. Prophet Muhammad and his followers were commanded to say, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Many people think that religion is only in the mosque, in the masjid, in the places of worship, only in Mecca or in Saudi Arabia or in the Prophet's masjid or during Ramadan in Islamic centers. Nay, not at all. Islam is a way of life and that's why true Muslims do not make any distinction between what's religious and what's worldly. Everything belongs to Allah. We all belong to Allah. So we eat according to His will. We eat according to what He desires. And we abstain from eating and drinking whatever displeases Him. We deal in our daily lives according to what he likes. This is the behavior of the true Muslims. While I was praying uh, Aisha in congregation, the Imam happened to recite a beautiful verse of Surah al -Zariyat. It is verse number 56, in which Allah the Almighty says, summarizing the purpose of life, many, many people, including those who are living in very advanced societies, do not know why were they created. The verse is, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah the Almighty is declaring the fact. What is the purpose of life? Why did He create us? This question has been asked very frequently. Why are we here? What is the purpose of our existence? Why are we present in this life? Why do we have to live for a very brief time, then die? And what's going to happen after death? So the Allah the Almighty answers by saying that I have not created jinn, nor ins, the jinn and humans, except for a single task, which is to worship me alone. I remember once in, uh, in the States, in a big uh, gathering, I uh, presented this question and I said, do you know what were you created? What is the purpose of your life? So one of the audience answered, because I was pointing, to other, uh, to various people to answer, so one of whom answered, and he said simply, and he was very proud of his answer, well, it was my parents' fault. That means his life is very insignificant. His life is worth nothing. He does not appreciate the value of life. He doesn't get it. Why was he created? He thinks that it was his parents' fault, that they had a desire, they had a sexual contact, and as a result of that, his mother conceived. Otherwise, he didn't even want to come to this life. While for the believers, they value and appreciate this gift, life, in which one would have plenty of time and chances to worship Allah the Almighty, to fulfill as much as we can of our obligations and duties, to prove practically through our actions to Allah the Almighty that we love Him, we believe in Him, and we're willing to give any sacrifice in order to prove our faith and monotheism. Accordingly, Mu'ad ibn Jabal once again was asked 
after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered his first question when he said, "Do you know what Allah is right upon His servant?" He said to worship and not to associate any with him in worship. Then once again the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal, "O oh Mu'adh, and do you know what the servant's rights upon Allah? Do we have rights upon Allah? Do we have a right upon Allah?" He said, "Yes." Mu'adh ibn Jabal said. Allah and His Messenger know best. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered that if his servants worship him alone and not 